Diabetes and speech therapy may not sound like they go together at all, but did you know that diabetes can in fact have an impact on functions that SLPs work with? This health condition affects how your body turns food into energy. Typically, our bodies break most of the food we eat into glucose, which gets released into our bloodstream. When blood sugar levels go up, our pancreas is signaled to release insulin. Insulin then lets the blood sugar into your cells to use as energy. When diabetes comes into the picture though, your pancreas can't make enough insulin, which can result in too much blood sugar remaining in your bloodstream instead of converting into energy. This can lead to serious health conditions like nerve damage, kidney disease, or heart disease which can then impact functions that med SLPs work with. Today, I'm going to cover three things SLPs should know when it comes to diabetes as it directly relates to our roles and responsibilities. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the Med SLP Collective and Med SLP Education. Number one. Diabetes and its medications can impact swallowing. Have you heard of diabetic neuropathy? This is nerve damage caused by high blood sugar. Most often, it's the long nerves that are affected, which is why you might see necrotic or missing toes in patients with uncontrolled diabetes. Can you think of one particular long nerve that SLPs spend some time learning about? If you said vagus nerve, you nailed it. The vagus nerve is important for a lot of functions, but one major function that can be impacted and even lead to a med SLP consult is gastric emptying. Now we are not the go-to experts or specialists in gastric emptying, that's for gastroenterologists, but sometimes the earliest symptoms present as globus sensation, hyperactivity of the cricopharyngeus muscle and the upper esophageal sphincter, and decreased pharyngeal sensation. Swallowing might seem difficult for these folks, which can lead them to us as the first line of consults. In fact, one research article from 2017 stated that nearly half of diabetic patients with dysphagia have some type of an esophageal motility disorder. Another paper published in 2020 found that dysphagia symptoms among the diabetic population appear to be greater among older individuals, individuals with type 2 diabetes, those who have been diagnosed for less than 50% of their lives, and those with poor overall health. Another important piece to the dysphagia puzzle among the diabetic population is the medication. Xerostomia or dry mouth can be a side effect of medication, but it can also be a symptom of diabetes. Xerostomia can lead to reduced oral hygiene, increased risk of infection, swallowing difficulty, and sometimes speech difficulty. So it's important that we look at this symptom, its potential causes, and ways to help our patients combat this uncomfortable and sometimes even harmful condition. So, as a med SLP, if you have a patient who complains of esophageal GI symptoms, dry mouth or swallowing difficulty, and they also have diabetes, make sure to take their diabetes diagnosis into account when assessing the whole patient. One member of the med SLP collective had a patient with diabetes who received a steroid shot in his knee, which resulted in high blood sugar or hyperglycemia for several days. While a normal blood sugar level is less than 140, this patient's blood sugar level was in the 600s. Yikes. On top of this big spike in blood sugar, nurses noticed a sudden onset of coughing during meals. Staff noted coughing and choking on regular solids, soft solids, and thin liquids. The SLP wanted to know if anyone had ever observed a sudden onset of dysphagia with high blood sugar and if there was any literature on it. Sure enough, a couple of SLPs chimed in sharing their experiences, noting that they have seen the scenario multiple times where hyperglycemia caused dysphagia or patients who had chronic dysphagia and experienced dysphagia flare-ups when they became metabolically out of whack. This conversation was eye-opening and even changed the way I thought about diabetes and its whole body impact. Number two, diabetes can impact your voice. Just like how nerve damage can impact swallowing and digestion, nerve damage can also affect voice. Chronic inflammatory polyneuropathy is the inflammation of long nerves, including the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is a branch of the vagus nerve that wraps around the aortic arch and innervates all of the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, except for the cricothyroid muscles. It also has sensory innervation to the larynx below the level of the vocal folds. When this nerve is damaged, it can lead to reduced vocal fold adduction as well as impaired airway protection. Some research has shown that patients with type 2 diabetes and poor blood sugar control presented with more vocal straining compared to those without diabetes. Another potential cause of voice change among those with diabetes is reflux. 
As discussed earlier, diabetes can lead to GI issues and an increased incidence of acid reflux. Acid reflux can alter voice quality. According to one study published in 2019, there is a higher prevalence of voice problems among those with diabetes as well as a higher incidence of acid reflux among this population, which had resulted in higher voice handicap scores. This study also found an increased presence of hoarseness and strained vocal quality among the diabetic population, particularly those with diabetes and gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. One of my SLP friends and colleagues shared with me the first time she learned to connect diabetic neuropathy with voice and swallowing. She worked at a very large level one trauma center and was being mentored by the team leader. She received a dysphagia consult for a patient who didn't appear to have any obvious risk factors for dysphagia. When she saw the patient, she noticed a somewhat hoarse or strained voice quality, but the patient denied any known vocal trauma or cause for the impaired vocal quality. My friend's mentor then asked to look at the patient's feet. The patient was missing a toe and appeared to have diabetic necrosis. Her mentor later explained how long nerves get affected by uncontrolled diabetes, which could then reasonably lead one to consider the impact of diabetes on the vagus nerve, including the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which could have a direct impact on voice. Instead of potentially discharging the patient from speech therapy services because of no overt signs and symptoms of aspiration or dysphagia, my friend took this knowledge into consideration and investigated a bit more. Sure enough, during the VFSS, she caught reduced opening of the pharyngoesophageal segment, which led to a moderate amount of pharyngeal residue, which the patient aspirated one time. This helped my friend make appropriate referrals to GI and recommend appropriate compensatory strategies to assist with bolus clearance and airway protection. I will be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Do you have any specific questions about diabetes and our role as SLPs? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. And make sure to stick around to the end to claim a freebie. Number three, dysphagia can impact cognition. As I've already been discussing, nerves can become damaged due to prolonged high glucose levels, which can damage blood vessels that feed the nerves, thus affecting the central nervous system. This can lead to cognitive impairments. It's also important to note that diabetes is a metabolic disorder, meaning there are abnormal chemical reactions in your body, which disrupt healthy processes. Several potential explanations for this include impaired vascular reactivity, neuroinflammation, oxidative stress, and abnormal brain lipid metabolism. Per one article published in 2016 titled Diabetes and Cognitive Impairment, cognitive deficits may occur at the very earliest stages of diabetes and are further exacerbated by metabolic syndrome. The duration of diabetes and glycemic control may have an impact on the type and severity of cognitive impairment, but as yet, we cannot predict who is at greatest risk of developing cognitive impairment. Both type 1 and type 2 diabetes can impact multiple domains of cognitive function, which has even been identified on brain MRIs. A member of the MedSLP Collective asked a question once about her patient with uncontrolled diabetes who complained of memory issues each time she had a hyperglycemic episode. According to the patient, whenever her blood sugar got too high, she noticed worsening short-term memory. Things like remembering which box to get her pills from in her pill sorter, or even remembering to turn off the stove became harder. This impacted her quality of life so much that she no longer cooked and she stopped driving. This sparked an excellent discussion with tons of resources provided by our mentors and community members regarding assessments for cognition, the differences between cognitive and cognitive communication therapy, and how to best approach cognitive assessments and therapies in this population. When it comes to diabetes, I definitely was not aware of the impacts it could have on cognition when I started out as an SLP. I've got a free gift for you over at MedSLPCollective.com. You'll get instant access to our free MedSLP Collective Clipboard Kit. We have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases. Head over to MedSLPCollective.com now to get your hands on this. The link will be in the description below.